A major rebellion erupted in the late second century AD in China. The once glorious An Empire, founded in the third century BC, was facing its most fragile moment. Many of the lower social classes protested with the massive corruption occurring in the court, leaving them to join the way of peace. Or, as it is better known, the Yellow Turban Movement, that sparkled a series of events that would eventually lead to the end of the most famous and beloved dynasty in China. Since the first Chinese dynasties, a motto existed to the legitimacy of the ruler. That would be known as the Mandate of Heaven. One didn't need to be of royal birth to achieve it in the eyes of the people. Instead, it was shown through his kind gestures and just governance. That is how many dynasties were born. The Han were such a dynasty. But almost 400 years of Han rule made the dynasty weak. For many decades that the emperors became indulged with food and women, leaving the duty of rule to their eunuchs, that used their influence and power over the emperors to enrich themselves. This appropriation of the empire's wealth left many people of the northern regions to seek employment in the south, where the lands were richer and wealthier. This led to the powerful landowners of the south to exploit the surplus of manpower, leaving them with vast riches at the discontent of the people. It was in the reign of Emperor Ling of An that the lower social classes began to openly revolt because of a new edict issued by the imperial court that raised greatly the taxes so to build new fortifications along the profitable Silk Road that was being attacked by several nomadic tribes. The massive corruption earlier described along with many weak harvests and current floods along the course of the Yellow River, made many landless peasants, unemployed soldiers and poor landowners to form private armies in protest, believing that the emperor had lost his mandate of heaven. Far from the open revolts of the common folk, in today's Changdong province, a healer by the name of Jiang Jue founded a Taoist sect along with his two brothers, Jiang Bao and Jiang Liang. Jiang Jue first tried to enter in the civil service of the empire, but failed his exams. Now he helped the poor by healing them for free, a gesture that made him and his brothers quite popular with the masses. Through their work, they saw the misery that the common people had to endure under the Han regime, along with the many natural disasters occurring in the empire. Zheng Jue, by that point, began to promote an uprising to remove the Han of the imperial rule and bring forth a new age that would distribute the land equally 
as well the equal rights of all people. This new movement of the Chang brothers began to attract all sorts of people, mostly peasants, but it also made its reach into the imperial court. With his new informants in Luoyang, Zhang Jue began to plan a rebellion across the entire empire, using many of his patients to spread the word. But before he could reliably call his supporters to arms, the authorities in Luoyang discovered Zhang Jue's intentions and killed his sympathizers. Discovering that his plans had been betrayed by an official of the imperial court, Zheng Jue had no choice but to prematurely call upon the supporters he could to begin the uprising against the Han regime. Even with this setback, he was able to rally around 300,000 to the Yellow Turban banner. So, in the second month of 184 AD, the Yellow Turban Rebellion began, with Zheng Jue styling himself as the Lord General of Heaven, while his brother Zheng Bao was the Lord General of Earth, and Zheng Liang the Lord General of People. By the 1st of April, 184 AD, Emperor Ling appointed his brother-in-law, the Intendant of Henan, He Jin, to be the General-in-Chief of the Imperial Forces facing the Yellow Turbans. Due to the slow reaction of the Han forces, the rebels had several commanding points in which they used to further their expansion, mainly in Ji, Qing, Yu and Yu provinces. He Jin, with only 40,000 troops, appointed three generals to command three separate armies. Lu Ji, a prominent scholar and the North General of the Household, was sent against the main Yellow Turban army in Ji province, commanded by Zheng Jue himself, while Zhu Zhu and Wang Fu Song, the left and right generals of the household respectively, were sent to the Yu and Jing provinces. Although these offensives were the decisive ones to determine the fate of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, many other smaller engagements took place at this time. The most well known of these was the case of Yu province, where the rebels had killed the inspector Guo Xun and the administrator of Guangyang Commandery, Liu Wei. Because of it, a colonel by the name of Zhu Jing began to rally forces around the province to repel the Yellow Turbans. It was by this time that a man by the name of Liu Bei heard the call and created a volunteer army alongside his sworn brothers, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei to help Zhou Jing. Many local administrators, feeling that their forces were superior, sallied out to face the rebel armies without the imperial reinforcements recruited by He Jin, leading to several defeats in the Runan and Nanyang commanderies where Zhang Mengcheng and Bo Sai, two yellow turban leaders, were causing major unrest at Yu and Jing provinces. When Zhu Jun arrived at Runan, most of the commandery was occupied by the rebel forces of Bo Sai, while Zhang Mengcheng took Nanyang. The Imperial Army marched against the main Yellow Turban host in Ronan, but Zhu Jun was defeated by Bu Sai and had to retreat. 
Wang Fu Song was called to aid the Imperial Army at Runan, while at the same time, the Imperial Court sended a cavalry commander by the name of Cao Cao to reinforce Zhu Jun's host. By the summer of 184 AD, the combined host of these three forces were able to defeat and kill both Sai, leading to several other victories that led to the liberation of Runan from rebel hands. With their first major obstacle defeated, the Imperial Court ordered the armies to split up with Wang Fu Song at the north, while Zhu Jun went to Nanyang Commandery. Meanwhile, Lu Yi was at Julu Commandery, where he defeated the main army of the Yellow Turbans, making Zhang Jue retreat to Guangzhou County, where he faced a siege for several days. He was able to send the Imperial forces back due to his connections with several of the Emperor's eunuchs that raised false allegations against Lu Ji. The Emperor removed him from the command of the army and put him in prison back in Luoyang, sending Dong Zhuo, a prominent figure in the West, to replace Lu Ji. This was the opportunity that Zheng Zhue used to sally from his defensive position to attack the Imperial forces, defeating them several times. Due to his incompetence in leading the Imperial host, Dong Zhuo was quickly replaced by Wang Fu Song, that began to push back the Yellow Turbans to their original positions. To the point where by winter, Zhang Zhue was again under siege in Guangzhou County. Over at Nanyang Commandery, by the time that Zhu Jun arrived, the forces of the region had defeated and killed Chang Meng Cheng. But the remnants of his army locked themselves at the commandery's capital, Wang Cheng. For several months, the imperial forces sieged Wang Cheng, where neither side could seize the advantage over the other. It was during these sieging months that a general of Xu province, Sun Jian, came to participate in the war against the rebels as a major in Zhu Jun's army. Upon winter coming, Zhu Jun decided to bring down the stalemate at one of their assaults at the city, where he pretended to attack the southwest walls, while he sended an elite force of 5,000 troops to take the northeast walls. The yellow turbans, in desperation, closed themselves in the citadel, declaring their surrender. All of Zhu Jun's retainers advised him to accept their surrender, but he refused. With the imperial food supplies running low, Zhu Jun devised a stratagem that made the Yellow Turbans believe that he had lived the siege and retreated. When they sallied outside Wan Chang, they fell prey to Zhu Jun's forces where all of the 10,000 rebels were slaughtered. By the last months of 184 AD, the major Yellow Turban uprisings had been defeated, with the main host being sieged by Wang Fu Song. Zhang Jue, the leader of the Yellow Turbans, by the winter of 184, died of illness, leaving his forces 
at the command of Zheng Liang. Knowing the death of Zheng Jue, Wang Fu Song tried to take Wang Zhong County by force. But the army there was too strong to be overrun. By using a defensive stratagem, the Imperial forces were able to lure the Yellow Turbans out of their strong defensive positions, taking them down by a night attack, where 30,000 rebels and Zhang Yang himself were killed. The remaining 50,000 Yellow Turbans, built by Zhang Jue, were now commanded by his youngest brother, Zhang Bao, that tried to flee to a stronger position still in Yellow Turban possession. But his army eventually drowned by crossing a deep river, which led to his death at the ends of his own subordinates. With the heads of the Zhang brothers delivered to the imperial court, Emperor Ling, by February of 185 AD, proclaimed the beginning of a new era. The era of the pacification achieved Zhongping. Although the main Yellow Turban forces had been defeated, for the next 10 years, several other uprisings would occur all over the empire, with the rebels referring to themselves as the Yellow Turbans. However, these ones lacked the dedication that Cheng Jue possessed, turning them to nothing more than an armed band of outlaws. The Han Empire had won a tremendous victory, but at a high price. Much of its infrastructure in the affected areas had been destroyed. Around 5 million people died from the conflict, and hundreds of thousands of civilians were without home and jobs. Many of the governors and intendants that aided the empire with the rebellion began to seek self-governing powers in the process, turning themselves into warlords that more frequently ignored imperial rule. The Han court was powerless to repair all of the damage that received from this rebellion, which led to the most infamous period in Han history.